Hey guys, David here from Guguda55 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an Ubuntu print server. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an Ubuntu print server that will share any printers that are connected to the server via USB or network across the network so that Windows computers can access them. So if you haven't already, you're going to need to go ahead and download the Ubuntu server ISO image from the link down in the description below. I'm using Ubuntu server 14.04.1 here. This is the newest version currently. However, the instructions for any version of Ubuntu server are the exact same. If you go to Ubuntu's website, the only option there is to download the 64-bit version. So I suggest you check the link down in the description below if you need the 32-bit version. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to boot up into the Ubuntu installation disk. Once you're at the screen here, you're just going to want to hit install Ubuntu server, and you'll be greeted with the installation screen. So you're going to want to choose your language, your country, territory, or area. If you want it to detect your keyboard layout automatically, you can hit yes, but if you already know what it is, you can just hit no. And mine is an English US keyboard. And now it's just going to load some additional components that it needs to start the installation. And it's going to configure your network with DHCP. So now it's going to ask you for a host name. Your host name is what other computers on the network will see your server by. So this is basically your computer's name. I'm just going to type in Ubuntu server and hit enter. And it's going to ask you to go ahead and create a new user. So the user's name, the username, and a password. It's going to ask if you want to encrypt your home directory. If you're going to be storing important files on the server, you're probably going to want to select a yes here. This will just make it a lot harder for people to get access to your home directory. However, since I'm doing this just in a virtual machine, I'm just going to hit no. It's going to ask if your time zone is correct, and in my case it is not. So you're going to want to select the city that is closest to you. And now it's going to ask us to partition the disks. Now this is where a lot of people will disagree with me on this. There are numerous ways that you can partition a disk. However, I find it easiest to just have one root partition and one swap partition. Some people like to have a separate home partition, and some people like to have even more separate partitions for different things. However, I feel as if it's easiest just to have one root partition and one swap partition, so that's what I'm going to do here. If you're not the best with partitioning, you can leave it at guided, use entire disk, and set up LVM. However, I'm going to go down to manual. I'm going to select my drive. I need to create a new partition table. And on the free space, I'm just going to create a new partition. And this is going to be my swap partition. So I'm just going to make it two gigs. When it asks if you want it to be primary or logical, choose primary. Want it at the beginning. And we're going to select use as swap area. It does not need to be bootable. So I'm just going to hit done setting up the partition. And with the remaining space, we're going to create our root partition. So, I'm going to create a new partition with all the remaining space. Again, a primary partition, not a logical. Format it using the extension for journaling file system and mount it as root. And we're actually going to change the bootable flag to on, just in case we want to install the bootloader to the root drive itself. Once I've done all that, I'm just going to hit done setting up the partition and finish partitioning and write changes to disk. It's going to ask you to confirm, just hit yes, and it's going to start installing the system itself. When it asks you for your HTTP proxy information, you can just hit enter unless you're using a proxy server, and it's going to start configuring apt so it can start downloading some packages that are needed by the system. Okay, so now it's going to ask you to select and install certain software. So this part can take quite a while, so just be patient. When it asks you how you want to manage upgrades on the system, you're most likely going to want to select Install Security Updates Automatically. This will just ensure that your server always has the most up-to-date security patches. But if you know what you're doing, you can also select No Automatic Updates or Manage System with Landscape. When it asks you what software you want to install, right now we're not going to select anything because it makes more sense to actually download it later from the repository so that we have the most up-to-date software. For now, if you'd like, you can just install OpenSSH server so you can manage the server remotely, but leave everything else blank for now. Okay, so once it's done installing the packages, it's going to start installing the bootloader. And when it asks you if you want to install Grub to the master boot record, if this is the only OS on the computer, you can hit yes. Otherwise, you're going to want to hit no. Because if you hit yes and you have other OSs on the computer, it might make booting the other OSs harder. However, this is the only OS on this computer, so I'm just going to hit yes. And it's going to tell you that the installation is complete. So you're going to want to remove the installation media and just hit continue and it should reboot into the server OS. And once you get to the login screen, you can just type in the username and password that you made earlier, 
And before we do anything else, we're actually going to want to enable the root user because it'll make managing the server just a bit easier so that we don't have to type in sudo in front of each command. So in order to do this, you're going to want to type in sudo space passwd space root. It's going to ask for your password, so just type that in. And it's going to ask you to create a new password for the root account, so type that in. And there you go, you should have successfully just enabled the root user, and you also just successfully installed Ubuntu server. Okay, so now we're actually going to go about installing Samba. Samba is the server module that's going to allow us to share connected printers over the network. The very first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to type in su and hit enter. Type in the root password that you just made, hit enter, and now you're logged into the server as root, so you don't need to type in sudo in front of each command. A server should always have a static IP address. This just makes it a lot easier for other computers to access the server because the IP address isn't always changing like you can get with DHCP. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to give this server a static IP address. Okay, so first you're going to want to type in ifconfig and hit enter. Now you'll see a list of the network devices on your computer, and in my case I'm using Ethernet, so mine is eth0. You're going to want to take note of the IP address that the DHCP service from your router has given you. In my case, that is 192.168.1.107. And you're also going to want to take note of your Bcast and your subnet mask. So in my case, the broadcast is 192.168.1.255. And the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So now we need to edit the interfaces file so this computer has a static IP address. In order to do that, we're going to be using the VI editor. So just type in VI space slash etc slash network slash interfaces. Hit enter, and you should see the file here. So you're going to want to go all the way down to where it says DHCP by your network interface. You're going to want to hit insert on your keyboard, and just backspace DHCP and change that to static. Hit enter, hit space, type in address, give the computer the IP address. So in my case that is 192.168.1.107. Now you can make this something different than what you saw in ifconfig, however it's just easier to use the IP address that the router already gave the computer so that you know you're not giving the computer an IP address that is already being used on the network. Once you've given the computer an IP address, hit enter, hit space, type netmask, space, type in the netmask from ifconfig, so 255.255.255.0. Hit enter, space, network, 192.168. And this is where the broadcast number comes in. So you're going to want to make this the second last set of digits in your broadcast number. So in my case, that was a 1 because my broadcast was 192.168.1.255. So I'm just going to type in 192.168.1.0. Hit enter. Space. Broadcast. Space. That Bcast number. So 192.168.1.255. Enter. Space. Gateway. Space. And then the IP address of your router. Common router IP addresses are 192.168.0.1, 192.168.1.1, and 192.168.2.1. In my case, mine is 192.168.1.1. If you're not sure, this is the IP address that you normally use to get to the web administration page for your router. So in my case, that is 192.168.1.1. Hit enter, hit space, type dns-name servers, space, the IP address of your router again, so in my case 192.168.1.1, space, and we'll just use Google DNS as a backup, so 8.8.8.8. .8 Once you've done that, hit escape on your keyboard, type colon WQ to write in quit. And now the easiest and most reliable way to restart the networking services is just to restart the machine itself. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and restarted the machine, you're going to want to log back in as root. And you're going to want to go ahead and update the package repository, so let's do that. So type in apt-get space update. Hit enter. And if it works, that also means that you configured your network correctly. Okay, so once it's updated the repositories, we're going to want to check if there are any updates for the system itself, just to ensure that we have the latest system available. So type in apt-get space upgrade. Hit enter. And I have a couple packages that can be upgraded here, so I'm just going to type in Y and hit enter. Okay, so now we need to install Samba. Samba is going to be our server module that's basically going to host our connected printers on the network. So type in apt-get space install space Samba. Hit enter. Type Y for yes, hit enter. And this part might take a little while, so just be patient. Okay, so now once it's installed, we need to edit the Samba configuration file to set up Samba as a print server. Again, we're going to be using the VI editor, so just type in VI space slash etc slash Samba slash SMB dot CONF. Hit enter. And under global, going to want to hit insert and change the workgroup name 
to whatever workgroup your Windows computers are on. So in my case, my Windows computers are on the workgroup Goguda. If you're not sure what workgroup your Windows computers are on, you can check by right-clicking on my computer and going to Properties. Okay, and under Workgroup, you're going to want to add a new line called Security, and say that it equals User. Next, you're going to want to scroll down all the way until almost the very end. And when you find Printers, you're going to want to change Browsable to Yes, and you're going to want to change Guest OK to Yes. Once you've done that, you can hit Escape on your keyboard, type in WQ, and it should go ahead and write the Samba configuration file. Next, we need to install the common Unix printing system, or CUPS. This is what's going to allow us to configure our printers. In order to do this, we're just going to type in apt-get space install space CUPS. Hit Enter, type Y, and again, this part might take a little while, so just be patient. Okay, so now to configure CUPS, normally you access the CUPS administration page from a web browser on the same computer that it's installed on. However, we don't have a desktop manager installed on this computer, let alone a web browser. So what we need to do is we need to make the CUPS administration page accessible from another computer on the network that does have a desktop manager and a web browser. In order to do this, we need to edit the CUPS D configuration file. So again, we're just going to be using the VI editor, so VI space slash etc slash CUPS slash cupsd.conf, hit enter. You're gonna wanna go to where it says listen, hit insert, delete the line that says listen localhost 631, and replace it with port 631. Next, scroll down to where you start seeing location, and under each location entry, you're gonna wanna type in allow all. So do that for every single location entry. So in total, there should be three. Hit escape on your keyboard, type in colon WQ, hit enter. And now the easiest way to restart CUPS and Samba is just to actually restart the computer itself. Okay, so now once your server is completely restarted, we can actually access the CUPS administration page from another computer that does have a web browser. This can be a Mac, Linux, or Windows computer, it doesn't matter as long as it does have a web browser and it's on the same network as your server. The CUPS administration page will allow us to set up both network and USB printers. I'm going to be doing both in this tutorial. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type in the IP address of your server. So in my case, that is 192.168.1.107 and then colon 631. So connect to port 631. Hit enter. And you should be greeted with the CUPS administration page. Okay, so first I'm going to configure a USB printer. So to configure printers, you need to go to administration, hit add printers. And your web browser might say this, just hit the link there. And again, hit add printer. And it's going to ask you for your username and password. Just type in root, and the password is your root password. Hit enter. It might take a minute, but you'll eventually get to this page. USB printers will be located under local printers. So I'm just gonna hit my Samsung printer there. I'm gonna hit continue. And if you were lucky, your printer should be in the model list. However, if it's not, you can search Google for a PPD, which you can download. And you can upload to the CUPS print server. Once you've done that, just hit add printer. I'm just going to select the default options and it should tell you that your printer has been added successfully. To set up a network printer, it's pretty much the same process. You can hit add printer and it should automatically discover network printers. However, if you don't see your printer listed here, you can configure the printer using the printer's IP address if you'd like. My network printer is showing up right here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and configure this printer. If you don't see your printer listed, but you do see another printer that is really close to your printer, you can try using that printer's driver. I'm just gonna hit add printer, set defaults, and it tells me that the printer has been added successfully. If you ever want to configure your printers, you can just hit manage printers and it'll show you all the printers that are currently configured on the server. Once you've gone ahead and set up all the printers that you'd like to set up, you can close out of this page and you're going to want to restart your server so that Samba gets restarted and the list of shared printers gets updated. Okay, so now to set up the printers on your Windows clients, you can open Control Panel, and you're going to want to find the Printer Preferences dialog. Once you're there, you're just going to want to hit Add a Printer, and you're going to want to say that the printer that you want isn't listed. You're going to want to select, select a shared printer by name, hit Browse, and it should automatically bring you to Network. Now, if you don't see your server in Network like I don't here, you can go up to the address bar, type in two backslashes, and then type in the name of your server. So in my case, I just named mine Ubuntu server, and you can hit enter. Then it should automatically connect you to the server where you can select the printer that you're going to want to install. 
For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to be installing the Samsung printer. However, the steps are the exact same for printers connected via USB or network to the Ubuntu server. Once you've selected the printer, just hit next, and it's going to tell you that there is no driver found. It's going to tell you that you can locate one manually by clicking OK, so you're going to want to click OK. Samba does support a feature called point and print, which allows you to upload the drivers to the server so that you don't need to configure the drivers on every single Windows computer every time you go to add the printer. The drivers will already be stored on the server, and it's just going to use those drivers. However, I'm not going to show you how to do this because in my experience it is quite buggy and it's extremely difficult to get working properly on 64-bit systems. If you would still like to try it out, you can go ahead and look at the documentation that I've provided in the link down below. Anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and select the driver for this printer here. So this is the Samsung ML2010. And if the printer isn't supported by Windows out of the box, you can also select Have Disk and you can select a driver manually or you can also check Windows Update. I'm just going to hit OK, and it should tell you that you've successfully connected the printer to the system. So I'm just going to hit Next. You can set it as the default printer if you'd like, and I recommend just going ahead and printing a test page, just to make sure that it's working properly. OK, the test page has been sent, and the printer is now printing the test page. If the printer prints the test page, you have successfully set up the server, and you can go ahead and hit Finish. And now your printer should be listed under Available Printers, so you should be able to print to it just fine now. So anyways, that's it for this tutorial. So thanks for watching, and I hope I helped. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more, and also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.gugudafitfivetechtutorials.com. All the links are in the description below.